why is it? Why can a woman meet a man, relate to him totally, which is going to include the sexual act, <laughs> and then she doesn't talk to him again? No commitment. Are you going to ignore the importance of safe sex considerations? Of course not. And for the sake of argument, the woman that I'm speaking about, she practices safe sex. Does that make it all right? Perhaps it does for you, Miss Dawson, but not for most women. Doctors, stroll with me into the 20th century for just a moment. Why is fun, casual, independent sex okay for a man, but not for a woman? If I may say so, you're not facing reality here. We have a society where the family unit is our hardcore. Doctor, if I want to go to bed tonight with a willing partner, I'm going to do it. And that's the reality. I'm Sandra Lee Dawson, and our topic for today was women's sexual freedom. I'll be back in a minute with a wrap-up. show was hot, Sandy. Keep the heat on. You know the way to my heart, Arnie. Bobby? Bobby, slow down, will you? You're taking this much too seriously. Man, you either do it or you don't do it. Well, I don't do it. How's that? Okay. Well, you are discredited to the city that raised you. No, the city that raised me considers running a means of self-defense and nothing more. Well, name another activity that pushes all the buttons as well. I could name a dozen. I just don't know one. Okay.
you know, it's gonna be one year and another month. The best year you ever had. <laughs> Another year or another other. Sandra Lee Dawson, apartment on Royal. The police are already there. The sexy talk show lady? Yeah. Rape? More like mutilation. Want a tour, Bobby? No, no, I just look around. Okay, I'll be my guest. I'll take the tour, Captain. Where'd they take her? Hope Hospital. She was cut to ribbons by some kind of precision instrument we haven't located. I didn't notice a forced entry. There wasn't. Looks like the lady was entertaining. If you don't mind, Captain, let's just stick to the facts, okay? It appears the assailant was a guest. Went bananas, probable rape, attempted murder for sure. Not much to go on. I'll type this right away. What is this? It's a unicorn. Heavy metal, paperweight decor. See the blood on the horn tip? She might have nicked him fighting back. Anything else? Partial shoe prints. Too large for the victim. But the same type. An athletic shoe. Thanks, Andy. You got a time on this, Captain? Around 7.30, trace it back from the 911 call. Are you sure no one was following her? Not sure, no. But you must look at something when you jog, right? A tree, a bench, a flower, a... Other people? Yeah, you do that too. Especially beautiful girls like Sandra Lee. Try, Mr. Wellman, anyone at all. Uh, there was this one jogger. I didn't really look at his face. What was he wearing? Dark blue warm-up. Uh, maybe he jogged after her, I don't know. Do you remember anything else about him? His shoes. They were a kind I never saw before. Something unusual about them. But I'm not real sure about any of this. And afterwards, you came back here. Did you hear anything from Miss Dawson's apartment? Stereo blasting. Look, I want you to call me if you remember anything else, if you see anyone suspicious around here. 
You might be a prosecution witness down the line. You're the prosecutor? That's right. You know, Sandra Lee, she's really a nice girl. She, uh, she's real down to earth for celebrity. Easy to talk to. Matt Collins at the time. Speak to Can you give us a minute, Lynn? Can you tell us anything? Uh, Bobby, can you tell us what's going on? You probably already know what we do. Sandra Lee was taking the whole pasta. Uh, Lynn? No comment. Looks like we're in for some media time. Oh, that's just what we need. We gotta keep him away. You kidding? How do you stop a tidal wave? Yeah, I guess so. You can bet on it. Where are you starting? In the park. Might not see you later on tonight. I don't think so. I'm gonna be at the hospital. Well, you're not gonna be there all night. Oh, if I can get a statement, yes, I will. You know, you need to lighten up. What are you talking you about? You know, police, media. You gotta give them a little sunshine once in a while. But I say that for very special people. That's your trouble, man. You're saving it. standing by, but she's in shock, and they can't wait much longer because of the vital tissues involved. And we have the circus to deal with. I wish we had a lion to throw them. Do we? No. We will. Lucy, I want you to get our PR man down here right away. From now until we hit the courtroom, if we hit the courtroom, we cannot have this hospital or anybody else blowing our case in the press. I can handle the press. No, I want you in there with Sandra Lee. Get Radigan. He knows the ropes. Okay. Okay. Lucy, have you seen her? Yes. Any words at all? She's only alive by the grace of God. Okay. Lab technologist, call 444. Idle signs stabilizing. We can't wait any longer. That should do the trick, Dr. Steiner. <coughs> Lynn, that's shyster for Jackson. He'll go for a no-low. Uh-uh, that puts it in the lap of Judge Hartley, and he won't send him away on a no-low. He's not 100 against on Nolos, Bobby. Captain Barrow is online, too. Thank you. I'll take it. Lynn Jacoby here. Yes, thank you. I'll hold. No, I do not want to take a chance on the Nolo. Yes, Captain Barrow. Yes, you're absolutely right. I did put Lucy in there without checking with you. I didn't want any gaps from the surgery room to the recovery room. Yes, I know that you have the security, Captain. But when she wakes up and has something to say, I want a nice, innocent female face there to reassure her. Is that okay with you? Thank you. Gosh, what a creep that barrel is. Does Lucy have the experience to deal with a lady like this? Oh. Well, we don't know what kind of lady she is yet. Lynn Jacoby here. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I'm out of here. Uh, Lynn. Lynn? Uh, can I have a private word with you, please? Yeah. Are you sure about Lucy? Being a nun wasn't all prayer and fasting. She's got super jazz with brains. You better lay off a barrel. He can be useful to us. Right, like a pit bull he can be useful. <laughs> I'll handle him, all right? Be my guest. So where are you off to? A day in chambers, plea bargaining the child molestation. Well, what about Sandra Lee? Uh, the tavern on City Park Boulevard at 6 to 9. Why don't you meet me? OK.
you like to do that? You're disgusting. studios you like to hang out here. Claire! You're coming for a minute. How you doing? All right. All right. All right. Lynn Houston, the manager. This is my boss, Lynn Jacoby. Oh, welcome. Can I get you something from the bar? No, thanks. Uh, how's Sandra Lee? She is not in good shape. Poor girl, huh? What do you know about her? Tell the lady. Comes in here three, four times a week. When she's through taping her show, after she's jogging. A regular, you know. Is that it? Used to tell her. Well, look around. Sandra Lee's a player, you know. No, I don't know. Explain it. Between us, right? All these guys, a lot of them anyway, have been with her. She practices what she preaches. And what does she preach? You know, casual sex, that sort of thing. Play with fire, burn you. And the two of you back there implying that she asked for it. Is that what I have to deal with? A female wears a mini, or excuse me, a little breast shows. What does that make her? Open prey for all the male wackos in the world. Wait a minute, Lynn. I'm not like that. Then you tell me why I'm feeling the way because I Because you are identifying with the victim. I'm the skeptic. It's my job. One day. This case is one day old, and they're already driving me crazy about Sandra Lee Dawson. It's still bedlam here outside the French Quarter apartment of ex-model and talk show hostess Sandra Lee Dawson, who was rushed to Hope Hospital just minutes ago after a brutal attack. Back to you, Terry. That's very sad news, Jody. Do the police have anything to go on? Not that we've been told. Could it be linked with her talk show? Well, Terry, I think that's certainly possible considering her subjects. This attack could simply be a cover for those who want to quiet this celebrated lady whose show has become increasingly controversial. Okay, thank you very much, Jody, and we'll keep you informed with updates. Did you get the picture? You can almost see the ratings in their eyes. This is gonna sell like watermelons in August. Now, what have you got? Well, not a lot. But if she wakes up from surgery, she'll be talking to Lucy. Well, that's good. That's, that's very good, very sensitive. <laughs> you sound like what you want to read in the newspapers. Well, there's nothing I'm ashamed of. It's the media you're going to have to handle on this case. Larry, I couldn't care less about the media. I know, I know, but I do. That's one of the reasons the Democrats are offering me the senatorial nomination. 
Do tell. Well, if it weren't so early in the day, I'd uncork a bottle of champagne. We could do that. <laughs> Congratulations, Larry. Gonna miss you. But you'll make a good senator. And you'll make a good DA. The one who takes over for me is going to be appointed and in office for three months before she has to stand for election. So handle the media, will you? Oh, I become the parish's first woman DA, and you win in a landslide with a female vote. Not to mention the black vote. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> the bottom line is, you can do the job. Thanks, Larry. But now I gotta get back to the bad news. Yeah, there are a lot of traps in a case like this. Yeah, at the same time, lying down in green pastures with the media. That's my lady. Who are you gonna pick? For what? Well, I just pick you. Now it's your turn. Who's gonna fill your shoes? Yeah, not so easy up here at the top, is it? <laughs> This is it, the whole bow. Here he is. You sure? I'm positive. I spotted him at the tavern. Nothing yet. Not a sound. I've seen the newspapers. <laughs> there ought to be a law. Oh, it'll get worse. If they could see her body, the stitching, maybe they'd forget this nonsense. Not a chance, Bruce. They're going to grind it out like a soap opera. <laughs> I better get back to her. What you better do is get some sleep. No, no, not now. I've got the feeling that she knows I'm there. That it makes a difference. Do we have anything? We have a slight opening. Yes. Bobby and Beryl are checking out. <laughs> Great. The old boy network. I'm sorry. But I can't very well stop and consider your relationship with Bobby every time I express myself. Okay, Lucy. Exactly what is on your mind? Lynn, everything Bobby has to say, down comes your stamp of approval. You rely on your associates, Lucy. Don't forget that. <sighs> he hassles suspects, Lynn. Welcome to the real world. Every one of us walks on the edges. When was the last time you ran a routine check on Bobby? In the field? Same time I ran one on you. Okay. We've already got six women here who testify that you came down to them with your kinky stuff. What's wrong with a little kinky? Maybe nothing if you claim. But you're not clean, Cal. You want me to read you your yellow pages? You got a long rap sheet, all dirty. I also got my rights, and you're leaning on me with nothing to go on. I got something going, all right. Sandra Lee, she's a nice-looking woman. Slightly available, just your cup of tea. Four phone calls on your phone bill. Five, 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 four, two, five, nine. Whose number that is? You know whose number that is? Yeah, you were here. Saw Sandra on Tuesday. Followed her. Came on to her, whatever. Got into her apartment, invited or uninvited, and then your string started coming loose. After you got finished with your kinky stuff, you started slashing her. Because you thought maybe she might be able to make you from seeing you around here. I couldn't have been here Tuesday. Tavern's closed on Tuesday. Oh, 
Hasta la see you. Investigator, DA's office, right? I guess it's part of your job knowing all the players. It is. Any leads on Sandra Lee's attacker? Well, I can't talk about that. Of course not. Good investigators never do. Cheers to what we have in common. Which is? We're in the information business. You use information to put someone behind bars, and I use it to tell the public what's going on. investigative reporters who solve crimes? Well, that's not entirely out of the realm of possibility. But I was thinking more of your personal career. You trying to bribe me? No. But I do know a few things. So you just like to strain out nice and slow, don't you? <laughs> what can I tell you? I live for the commercial breaks. That's how I hold my audience. But you still have to deliver facts. Sounds to me like you're on a fishing expedition. Okay. Fact. Your immediate superior, Miss Jacoby, will become the next DA. Guess that puts you in line for a step up, doesn't it? What are you talking about? The DA may very well become the next senator of this great state. He'll name his own replacement. You should sell fiction. You spin a good yarn. I do other things very well, too. Connections will be very crucial for us. Go easy. I know. I've got a hotline to the psychiatric resident. Good, solid lady. Are you all right? Yeah. Sure. Everything else dwarfs in comparison to this case. I know how you feel. I'm just not sure why. All of my own, my own feelings. They're all in that room. With that woman. It's because she is a woman. And only women are brutalized in this way. I'll have you know, Mr. Marsh, that I am a good reporter. You're a good-looking woman reporter. <laughs> And I use it to score a home run. But you only get so many opportunities before this falls apart. TV likes the women young. If you're not a household word, by the time you're 40, you don't make it to Cronkite land. 
The only one that's past that timeline in my business is Barbara Walters. I intend to become the second. End of mystery. You sure got it figured. So what do you want to do when you grow up? Lucy. I'm Lucy Capella. I'm with the district attorney's office. I'm here to help you. Reggie. Who? Who, Sandra Lee? Reggie Morris. Could we get some No way. I'm seeing her alone. I don't think that's wise, Mr. Morris. Talk to her. You're being difficult. She didn't ask for a quorum. She asked for me. Dr. Lees, I really do think it will be all right. We'll all be out here. Be careful, Mr. Morris. She is severely traumatized. I managed Sandra Lee for the last 10 years, ladies. I know how to handle her. to see me again tomorrow. Right now, I think I gotta get out of here and get myself a stiff drink. Mr. Morris, what did she say? Say? The woman's in bad shape in there. She can't even talk. She wants me back tomorrow. That's all I know. Mr. Morris, I can't impress upon you enough how difficult it's going to be for Miss Dawson. You must tread lightly. Doc, Reggie Morris always treads lightly. Come on, Lucy. Reggie Morris discovered her. Poor family, abusive father. Brought her to New Orleans. Was or wasn't responsible for her becoming a top model. Depends on who you listen to. A bit of a hustler. He did have a hand in getting her the TV show from which he was recently fired. I'm not surprised. What about your suspect? Well, Kevin Masters. He hangs out at the tavern. Owner of a dark blue jogging suit and a convicted sex offender. Does he wear glasses? As a matter of fact, he does. The lab people found some tiny fragments on Sandra Lee's carpet. Turns out to be lenses from a pair of glasses. Sandra Lee doesn't wear glasses. Well, maybe we have something to celebrate. Could I interest you in a uh, crawfish etouffee and a bottle of wine? You're reading my mind. You know my favorite film, The Ipcris File? Michael Caine, up to his ears in trouble, and still time to be a gourmet. I prefer Tom Jones. Something to do with your upbringing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been doing this work for... for so long. And I still can't get over the fact that there are people who actually do the things that were done to Sandra Lee. Oh, good for you. The last thing I want to see is that pretty face of yours turning to stone. Stop. 
So what's going on downtown? Plenty. You might be looking at the next DA. You're kidding. No, if McMahon gets the nod for the Senate, I'm front and center. You told me. All right. Oh, more reason to celebrate. <laughs> So what happens to your job? It'll go to Lucy. Wait a minute, are you serious? Well, yes. Do you realize that in our vice bureau, over 90% of victims are women? How many are black? Well, it, 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 it doesn't have anything to do with race. Just gender, huh? Well, no, honey, there are other considerations. We can't continue our careers this way. And at the same time, think of a life together. It's worked so far. Not really. We've placed too much pressure on ourselves. And if I'm DA, it'll be impossible. You know, your legal talents would be worth a fortune out there. People would stand in line if they knew you were available. You think so, huh? Oh, yes. And so do you. I mean, come on. You could charm the pants off any jury in America. Well, think about it, honey. And think about the loot, because we sure as hell can't buy a house on what the city pays us. Mm. I'm gonna take this. Be right there. Sandra Lee's ready to make a statement. Dr. Lynn, can I see you for a minute? Hi. How you doing? You know this Jody Nichols from Channel 9. She wants to follow you around with the camera on this show. Follow me around? But she wants to do a special report. Suppose some footage lands on TV before it's time. Well, no, we're going to have some controls with her. Still, Larry, this could lose us a conviction. You know what you're turning down? If all goes according to Hoyle, you are going to have to stand for election somewhere down the line. Now, this TV coverage is exactly what you need. I'm sorry, Larry. It's a chance we cannot take. All right. Nurse Jacobs, admissions, please. Sunderly, this is Captain Barrow from the New Orleans Police Department. Lynn Jacoby, assistant district attorney. And Robert Marsh, our investigator. No, Lucy. She doesn't want any men in here. Lady, I have to be here. Lucy. I'm sorry. That's the way she wants it. How am I expected to do my investigation? It'll all be on here. Could we please get on with this? Smoking. Sunderly, whenever you feel like talking, it's working. Then jogging, the twilight, and then back at my apartment. It must have fallen 
me walk from the tavern. It was just there behind me. Oh. It was all so... Oh. Miss Dawson. Miss Dawson, the tavern was not open that night. I don't know. doctors in surgery with you. The one with the glasses. I'll never forget those eyes. Has he been here to examine you? No. No. But, Miss Dawson, if you only saw him in the operating room, he was wearing a surgical mask. I don't care. Those eyes. I'll never forget the cruelty. Oh, God. He did this to me. He did this to me. Just one more question and then you can rest. What? What do you want? How do you know his name? Reggie got me his name. Now, how can you believe Sandra Lee's statement? I'm just checking. She had to be in a hallucinatory state in the operating room. She didn't even get a clear look at him. It's far-fetched, I know. Bobby, I want you to work up a background on this doctor immediately. You're going after him alone? I'll need that background fast. Okay. You're calling the shots. You want to see me? Yes. Lynn Jacoby, thank you for taking the time. Doctor, how did you become involved with Sandra Lee Dawson? Dr. Nystrom. He called me and traumatized tissue. I do that sort of thing. Oh, you didn't know her before? No, I've seen her show occasionally. I can't say that I agree with very much of it, but I have seen it. Look, I'm sorry to cut this short, but I have another surgery waiting. Have you done any follow-ups on the patient? No. I never do follow-ups on someone else's patient. Excuse me. Dr. Steiner, are you a jogger? The last five Crescent City Classics and under four. You can get arrested for that kind of talk. You know it, too. Listen, why don't you just let me show you something I've got here? Uh -huh. <laughs> Your parole officer will put you back in the joint. Parolees aren't allowed in bars. Something exotic, like a 
Agatha Christie novel. Bobby's background on Steiner says type O positive. Just like your friend Kevin Masters. Please. Why did you do such a thing? It worked, didn't it? The man's walls, they're a porno store. And smack in the middle, a classy photo of Sandra Lee. Bobby checked his phone bill. Four calls to Sandra Lee in two weeks. Yeah, but he was with his parole officer in Duncan Plaza at 7.15. He'd have to be the, the human flash to be in City Park around 7.30. But not so much of a flash if it was near 8 o'clock, because we don't have a definite time, you know. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at Steiner. Positive ID. Murky, at best. Okay, murky ID, but... He lives on the west side of the park, near Sunder Lee. Same jogging routes. He used a credit card at a restaurant on Esplanade. Same date. That puts him in the same area. But this doesn't show a time. This could have been lunch. Uh-uh. He had lunch at the hospital commissary. I I've confirmed that. And there's the band-aid you saw on his face, possibly covering up a wound from the unicorn tip. Oh, but it breaks up. I mean, what did he do? What did he try to do? Did he try to kill her or almost kill her so he could mend her on the operating table with it? Morbid. You know, if you're right, he could hide behind an insanity play, which we don't want. Lucy, that is not our concern. You know, Lynn, uh, I didn't give up being a nun because of sex or church politics, the way everybody thinks. It's more primitive than that. I know. You can't know. I've never told you. Your vow of forgiveness, you couldn't honor that. You talked to my mother superior? No, I didn't have to. I've seen you go after the hard cases, just like you're going after this one. <clears throat> yes, this is Lynn Jacoby. I'd like to leave another message for Bobby Marsh, please. Yes, it is now... three minutes after midnight. I'm still in the office. Call me. Thank you. You're talking about Robert Marsh personal or business? Don't start. This is Bobby Marsh. Any messages? District Attorney's Office, Lucy Capella speaking. Just a minute, Bobby. Bobby, I've been trying to locate you for hours. We can talk about that later. Listen, I need you to contact Captain Barrow immediately. We need a search warrant for Dr. Steiner's apartment. No, it cannot wait. It must be done right away. Thanks. There. You see? Business. Uh-uh. Personal. I could have called Barrow. I don't believe her. She's going after the doctor. Are you responsible for my apartment being searched last night? Yes, I am. And is it within my legal rights to see a list of what's been taken? Am I being charged with anything, Mr. Jacoby? Oh, no, sir. That's why we agreed to your request that we meet away from our office. However, it is appropriate that a lawyer be present. Please, what, what's this all about? I'm a malpractice Please, lawyer. Please, Harold. I need a witness to this farce, nothing more. Oh, this is not a farce, Dr. Stein. We're investigating the attempted murder and rape of Sandra Lee Dawson. Now, wait just a minute. Dr. Steiner is an outstanding surgeon. You can't possibly consider him a, a suspect in such a bestial crime as that. My God, lady, this is totally outrageous. Leland, please let me call someone. I'm not going to waste my money on a criminal lawyer when I've committed no crime. Let's just get this over with. Dr. Steiner. Can you establish for us where you were on the night of October 11th, 
from 7 to 9 o'clock. Later that evening, you were called in to assist in surgical procedures on Miss Dawson? I mean, obviously, I was on call, so I had to be in the general area. I might have been at my mother's for dinner that night. I'm, I'll have to check, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I was. That small wound on your face. Yes. Oh, this. What about it? Well, when we first spoke at the hospital, it was covered with a Band-Aid. That was a few days after the crime. Superficial wounds are usually covered with Band-Aids, Mr. Cooley. Miss Dawson has stated that she hit her assailant in the face with a small metal object. Leland, I really think we ought to call This someone. wound is the result of tripping over my desk at the LSU Medical School, where I teach three days a week. I'd say there were 40 people who witnessed the fall. The number of students in my class, Mr. Jacoby. Well, thank you for your cooperation. Uh, we have no further questions for the moment. Miss Jacoby, I value my reputation very highly, and I think I've been most cooperative. But there definitely would be a lawsuit if your allegations about this sordid matter were to go public. You're losing me. You really are. I wouldn't like that. Why are you going after this guy? For God's sake, Lynn. Come on, Bobby. Screws come loose on all kinds of people. We're talking about probabilities here. Look, take Kevin Masters. He picks up a woman, comes on to her, the woman is willing, and he goes for a brutal rape. Not to mention the phone calls that he made to Sandra Lee. That's four one-minute phone calls, Bobby. He just listened to her voice and he hung up. That's a fair assumption. What are you driving at? Kevin Masters had a phone fetish for all of his previous victims. He started out by making one-minute phone calls, no more than that. And then, after a period of months, the calls got up to eight or ten minutes after he got to know his victims. Okay. I know where you're going. Sandra Lee was targeted as Kevin's next victim. Only takes him months to rev it up so he wasn't ready to pounce on her yet. Guys like Kevin Masters do not carbon copy their M.O.'s, Lynn. You can't knock him out the box that easily. Well, that's only part of it. Lucy's backup points to Steiner. Lucy is doing backup? Well, that's the way I operate. You know that. You've done backups on her investigations many times. Yeah, but not without her knowing it up front. Well, I can't very well keep you informed, Bobby, when you haven't been around. the day it happened? Mm -hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 to 1. Could we limit this to October? It was October. October 12th, to be exact. The same day Columbus and I both discovered America. <laughs> <laughs> you could see him trip and lose his balance a few feet before he reached the desk. And he took out a handkerchief to staunch the bleeding. Did you see the blood on the handkerchief? She is terrific, isn't she? Did you see the blood? No. Maybe there was no blood. Maybe your mind just registered it because that's what your mind expected to see. No, Amy saw the fall. Oh, I'm sure you did, Amy. But did you actually see his cheek impact the corner of the desk? Maybe it's in the realm of possibility that it only appeared that way, but he sure as hell came back to the room with a Band-Aid on. He didn't have it on before the fall. Well, we did only see him for a minute before he... Tripped. Are you free for dinner tonight? Let's see now. Uh, he entered through this door, right? Right. Okay. He enters this door, walks to the desk. No side trips? No. A beeline, like always, with his head down. All right, so that would mean that the left side of his face could only be seen by someone who was standing at the blackboard behind the desk. Were any of you standing there? No. 
we were all up here. Then the only time you saw the left cheek is when he turned and walked out. And all you saw then was the handkerchief he was holding there. Do you want to be my lawyer? Or, or maybe just a date. I would, I would settle for a date. <laughs> the very next day after the attack, he staged it. Wait. Sandra Lee Dawson case is heating up. The local authorities do have a suspect, a Dr. Leland Steiner, a noted cosmetic surgeon who also assisted in the surgical procedures on Miss Dawson the night of her attack. Well, so much for police security. There won't be a juror left in the state who can stand up to a peremptory challenge. The security's been good, Larry. Wonderful, so one of our own cashed in. Reggie Morris did this. He's the only one who had access to her. Reggie Morris took those photographs, and I doubt that Sandra Lee knew anything about it, because look, on the cover of every tabloid, her eyes are closed. She was sleeping when they were taken. Well, what about Jody Nichols? She plays in your ballpark. No, no, I can assure you that did not come from me. I am a media player, yes, but I am not a fool. Now, what do you want to do, then? I want to take it to the grand jury. But all you've got is circumstantial. Oh, we've made lots of indictments on Les. It's all in here. Well, let me point out a few things to you. You did not touch base with the police when you put Lucy in her hospital room. You certainly have not cooperated with the press. And Dr. Steiner is a reputable member of the community. Now, if you're wrong, you're going to be barbecue on the 6 o'clock news. I'll take my chances. All right, it's your case. Well, remember, mama birds throw little chicks out of the nest. They either fly or die. I'm not a chick, Larry. Hello, stranger. Would you like a drink? No. Are you okay? I heard you were going to the grand jury. The evidence points to Steiner, Bobby. And that's my job, to put it before the people. 
Why are you so sure that it's Steiner? Number one, Sandra Lee was slashed with a precision instrument like a scalpel. You said it. Like a scalpel. Number two, Steiner lied about how he got that nick on his face. Circumstantial. Will you let me finish? Number three, he did not have dinner at his mother's house as he claims. Lucy has proof that he ate at a restaurant. So you get an indictment. You'll never get a conviction on evidence like this. This also Sandra Lee's identification. She can't testify. Not in her condition. I don't need her for an indictment. That comes later in a trial. You're gonna blow your promotion on this one. Well, nobody said it would be easy. Where are you going? Out. Here you go. I don't know about you, Reggie. Turn off the recorder in Sandra Lee's room. Sell photos to scandal rags. Haven't broken any laws, have I? Not if you're Sandra Lee's agent. But if you're operating without her knowledge... Let me tell you something. I'm doing what's right for her and me, okay? When this sordid little affair is over, Sandy's show's gonna be back bigger than ever. And I'm gonna be right in the middle of the action again. Ain't life grand in a hype world. Two more. I hear you, Reggie. I know how difficult it is for you. And how you must feel about all men right now. But if we're gonna nail this son of a bitch in a court of law, we've got to check everything. I know it's painful, but I want you to think back about the suddenness of the attack. You were confused, hysterical, and then a doctor's pair of eyes. I can't talk about this again. Oh, take it away! Oh, take it away! You saw it. Dr. Steiner, right? Yes! Yes! It's not Dr. Steiner, Sandra Lee. Playing games with me, Bobby? Just give Reggie a call. He and Sandra Lee might have something for you. Why don't you just tell me what it is? I can't do that. I'll give him a call. You can put him in a lineup. Is he the only Do you expect an indictment, Mr. Colby? Comment. Think you can nail the doctor? No comment. Defense attorney, why won't they give us a comment? Well, of course they have no comment. They have no case. Is that all you're going to say? That's all, yes. And so, Your Honor, without prima facie evidence, I ask that the charges be dropped. The presumptions are sufficient on all counts. The suspect stands charged. Bailiff, carry on. Bond is set at $250,000. Your Honor, this is ridiculous. A bond of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. If my mother dies, her blood is on your hands, Jacoby. Your hands. It's a total disaster. Not quite. This goes out in an hour. Along with the statement from Mrs. Steiner's doctor that her heart has been extremely weak for years. And that if he had known about her courtroom visit, he would have advised strongly against it. 
Still, Steiner comes out of martyr, and I'm the dragon lady. For now, yes. But not when he's convicted. He is going to be convicted, isn't he, Lynn? We have an exclusive report now from Jody Nichols, who's been covering the investigation of Sandra Lee Dawson's brutal attack. Jody? Thank you, Terry. In the fast-breaking Sandra Lee Dawson case, Reginald Morris, her manager, handed us an audio tape which will have the district attorney's office burning the midnight oil. Ms. Dawson has confirmed this tape as hers by telephone just a few minutes ago. With an indictment already underway, and knowing the power of television to quickly right wrongs, I want the viewers informed that I have made a mistake. At the present time, I no longer consider Dr. Steiner as a suspect. It was another man whose identity I am not at liberty to divulge at this point in time. Yes, I'll pick you up at your place. We're gonna find Reggie Morris. I need some answers from you now. And if you back off, I'm gonna haul your butt into jail on the spot for withholding information from an ongoing trial. I got nothing to say. Do you think we got to go in here some kind of popularity contest? Where you been all your life, Reggie? Well, I'll tell you where you're going. Read in the violations, Luce. Criminal codes, Louisiana Revised Statute, number 130.1. Once an indictment is fixed... Okay, okay, skip it. I'll skip to the end. Either a fine of $10,000 or five years in a state prison, with or without hard labor. Let's hear it fast. It was her statement. I just did what she told me to do. Sure you did. After persuading her, publicity never hurts. What made her change her mind? Ask one of your own dudes about that. We don't have dudes, Reggie. That's your turf. You got one now. Bobby Marsh. This is Lynn Jacoby for Bobby Marsh. I have left the car, and I'm waiting for his call at home. It's urgent. Thank you. Mess. There's no real way out. But Sandra Lee Dawson did change her story, and you had no way of knowing about that. Just ask for a dismissal and tell the truth. Larry, I'm sorry. I know what this does to your aspirations. I got some phone calls to make. Get Bobby in here. I don't know where he is. Find him. Hi, baby. Why didn't you come to me with Sandra Lee's revised statement? <laughs> I was coming to you, like I always do after I finish the research. See, I didn't know what Reggie Morris was going to do. Didn't you? No. But you did know how important it was to me, Bobby. Look, you're still going to get the job done, man. All we got to do is put Kevin Masters on the lineup. Sandra Lee will finger him, and the media will forget all about this little interlude. Monday morning, before I go to court, I want a report of exactly what happened in your exchange with Sandra Lee and Reggie Morris. And then you turn over your active files to Lucy. You're suspended until an investigation is complete. You sure you want this? Yes. You're missing a golden opportunity, Lynn, to make things better. Better for whom, Bobby? Better for yourself, better for the DA, better for me. You got the wrong man on trial, Lynn. Monday morning. You snake. I 
I thought it would be easier, Luz. What, Lynn? Being with someone all the time, at home, in the office. I thought it would be easier. Maybe what people say is true. A problem mixing love and work. I guess. Uh... It shouldn't be. But being together all the time, you can lose perspective. You just assume something so totally. Analytical loose. Very analytical. He showed me the picture. And all I could think of was the glasses. And those eyes. In my living room. Those eyes. Sandra Lee. When you first identified Dr. Steiner, you talked about those cruel eyes. Could you now be mistaken? Sandra Lee. Are you sure it was Kevin Masters who attacked you? I'll get the nurse. Hoping she could go to court. Oh, not in her condition. Not for a long time. All right. We need a warrant for Steiner's office. But the judge will dismiss Monday morning. That gives us the weekend to find new evidence. <sighs> Maybe we're wrong, Lynn. Maybe it is Kevin Masters or someone else. Maybe. But my gut tells me it's Steiner. How come I'm not getting this through channels? Politics, my man. It's come straight from the DA's office. Hey! What did I tell you last time, scuzzball? When I say off these streets, I mean off these streets. Forever. Now, you got that? What time you want him there Monday? Yeah, 10 o'clock on the button. Dark blue warm-up suit and glasses. Got it. Thousands like it, Luz. Not thousands like these. The right one's built up. Look. My God. It's Sandra Lee. Sandra Lee. 
Will you ask for a dismissal? What's your next move, Mike? No comment. The judge will have a recommendation on things. Come on. Let's look. Sandra Lee! Sandra Lee! It's you! It's you! You did it! You're the one! You're the one! You did it! Kevin Masters has successfully recovered from surgery and will in all likelihood be indicted. Investigator Robert Marsh is in guarded condition in the hospital. As for Sondra Lee Dawson, she will require extensive psychiatric care, and at best her recovery will cover a long period of time. We are gonna have to plea bargain with the pornographers. Why? The girls signed consent. The uh, DA wants to throw out the vice case against the Canal Street cops. Insufficient evidence. Then find more evidence. We still have the Steiner indictment to deal with. And what to do about Kevin Masters. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How goes it in your seamy little world? We're on top of it. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, if you all will give Lynn and me just a few minutes together. <clears throat> All right, let's get rid of this Steiner mess once and for all. If the indictment is still pending officially. You'll have to ask for a dismissal in court. It's been established that he spent a lot of time at his mother's house. I'll need a warrant to search it. Haven't you botched this one up badly enough already? Or is it the world's record in self-destruction you're after? He's guilty, and I know it. Well, there's not a judge on the bench who's going to give you a warrant, not after what's happened. Call in a marker. What? Just one, Larry. <laughs> well, for somebody who is not a game player, you have got a lot of nerve. I want to proceed against Steiner. All right. Convince me. Please sit down, Mr. Kobe. Thank you. I'm very sorry to inconvenience you, Mrs. Steiner. Captain, Captain, could you please wait? Just a few moments. What are you looking for, Mr. Kobe? Mrs. Steiner, I know how difficult this is for you. I want to know. Your son's running shoes. Very unusual looking. He had them specially made. Leland's right leg is three-eighths of an inch short. As a marathon runner, he knew that the constant jarring could lead to an arthritic hip. The shoes are unusual looking. And we have a witness who will testify that he saw them on a jogger in the park that evening. Is that your idea of evidence, Mr. Kobe? A pair of shoes. 
We have a great deal of evidence, Mrs. Steiner. Enough to convince a jury that my son committed this terrible crime? I doubt it. I know my son. If you knew him, as I do, there's a lot that we don't know, even about people we love. Let me show you his scrapbook. All the celebrated people whose faces he's restored. As a child, Leland would cut out pictures of beautiful faces. That's all he ever wanted to do, Mr. Kobe, to make people beautiful. Leland is a fine doctor, Mr. Kobe. Yes, he is. A caring man. He has much to give the world. Not if you committed this crime, ma'am. We found this in your son's office. This isn't proof. This is the way you see a life, Miss Jacoby. In fragments. I see my son's life whole. I see the pieces together, fitting perfectly. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to be alone, Mr. Jacoby. What are we looking for, Counselor? Anything, Captain. empty. All right, let's pull the plug on this one. He knew he was going to be on call that night. And he knew all emergencies in his neighborhood were going to be routed to his hospital. Is that a fact, Miss Capella? And what is it you're groping around for? A motive, perhaps? Larry, you saw the cutouts of Sandra Lee in his file. What the hell does that prove? Plastic surgeons do that. Right, as they prepare for surgery. He didn't have time to prepare for Sandra Lee. She was an emergency. So why the cutouts unless he'd been thinking about her before the assault? A twisted doctor with delusions of grandeur? A repressed man who didn't like what Sandra Lee had to say about males and females. So he destroyed her and then he saved her. That is classic delusion of power. I see. And you want to go before a jury with that story? An attempt to establish motivation? You're the ones with delusions of power. It ain't good enough, ladies. For you, Lynn. Thank you. Is that Dr. Steiner? Yes. Where'd they come from? They came from a very courageous woman.
It's blood. I'll run the type. What happened, Bobby? Being subservient to a woman, is that what this was all about? Did I really handle it that badly? The difference between us... is I would have given you the promotion. Just like you should have given it to me. That's the way they do it in the real world, man. Our job is to gather and analyze evidence. And... And Lucy just does it better. I hope you'll be on your feet soon. I should have known. You left enough signposts along the way. I, I should have known. Maybe it's because you were always Bobby. feeling up to rip. You'll be facing obstruction of justice charges. Ma'am? Ma'am. The blood type is O positive. The same as Sandra Lee's, but also the same as the doc. But we ran the fibers on the sole here. The exact same fiber strand as in Sandra Lee's carpet. It's scientific beyond a doubt. Good work, Stan. You got him, counselor. I want a like statement. You, you can't Dr. make a statement. You have any remorse over the crime you've committed? Give us a comment, Dr. Stan. How do you think you're going to adjust to prison life? Just give us a few words. Here comes the DA. Hey, Mac, give us a statement, will you? I'll talk to you in a minute, Dan. All right. I'll be with you in just a minute. Excuse me. Give my regards to Bermuda. I will. Congratulations, Lucy. Thank you. And congratulations to you. Good job, well done, all that sort of thing. Thank you. So, how goes your nomination? Well, it's back on track, I think. <laughs> uh, Lynn, a couple of realities to take with you on your holiday. You get A for courtroom, but you flunk badly in some other categories. I have some regrets, but I did my job. And Steiner's where he belongs. Yes, you did your job, but you didn't do it the way the boys do it. I'm not one of the boys. I know that. <laughs> Listen, as DA, you're going to have the spotlight on you all the time. And we got some unwritten rules out here. We do things a certain way so that everybody down the line gets the message and nobody gets burned. Lynn, try to think of it as a club. Larry, you know I'm not the clubby type. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being there for me. That was easy. <laughs> 